Hello guys, my name is Marcos Mia. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be ranking some of the best and worst ETFs to buy and hold forever. Now we're going to be ranking these ETFs based on three criteria. So our first criteria is if the returns can keep up or outperform the S&P 500. Our second is if they have a low expense ratios. And the third is can it comfortably buy and hold this ETF forever and sleep at night? So this is our three criteria that we're going to be using to rank all these ETFs. We have 20 ETFs to rank. Some of the best ETFs, the most popular ETFs are on this list, such as VOO, JetBee, SCHD, IVV, VTI, SCHD, QQQ, you name it all. It's all on this list and we're going to be ranking it in this YouTube video. So let's get started with this video by ranking our first ETF, that being VOO. So if you're going to M1 Finance, I'm going to be linking down below all these ETFs in M1 Finance. So you guys can see the performance of these ETFs at a glance. So if we go to VOO, we can see that VOO tracks a market cap weighted index of US large and mid cap stocks selected by the S&P committee. So basically VOO is 500 of the largest companies in the United States. That being it tracks an S&P 500 because the VOO is an index fund. So VOO's top holdings include Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Nvidia, all these blue chip stocks that everybody should know about and should be familiarized with. Now, if we go to Seeking Alpha, now I am affiliated with Seeking Alpha to bring you guys this dividend ETF screener. So if we go to VOO and Seeking Alpha, we could see that for the expenses, which is one of our criterias, it has an A plus grade because VOO has a 0.03% expense ratio against all ETFs, which is 0.47. So VOO has an excellent expense ratio, low fees, that checks our box. We go to our momentum chart. We're going to be using the total return versus the S&P 500 because total return includes dividends reinvested and dividends into our return. So since VOO tracks the S&P 500, it's going to be keeping up and mirroring that ETF and the index fund. In the past year, VOO is down 11%, mirrors the S&P 500. Past five years, it's up 66%. And in the past 10 years, it's up 211%. VOO has to be one of the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. It's super stable, super reliable. So with that in mind, I'm going to be ranking VOO S tier as one of the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. Now, if we go to our number two, let's select another one. Let's select SCHD by Charles Schwab. If we go back to M1 Finance and go to SCHD, we can see that SCHD tracks a market cap weighted index of 100 dividend paying US equities. So SCHD is a dividend ETF that provides a lot of dividend um, payments to investors with these big dividend companies such as AbV, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Texas Instruments, all these great ETF, um, dividend ETF, dividend stocks into SCHD. So if we go back to Seeking Alpha, type in SCHD, we can go to look at the expense ratio as an A plus grade. Low expense ratio, low expense ratio of 0.06%, so it gets that A plus grade. If we go back to Momentum, we can see the total return versus the SP 500. SCHD is actually outperforming the SP 500 in the past year with less um, of a downfall of negative 6% versus the SP 500's negative 11. The past five years, it has actually outperformed the SP 500 with 73% returns versus SP 500's 66%. And in the past 10 years, it has underperformed the SP 500 just barely, but it has kept up with the SP 500 and is a great dividend paying ETF. And I could comfortably buy this ETF forever and sleep at night, as well as VOO, low expense ratios, and it has great performance. So I'm going to be ranking SCHD as S tier, one of the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. If we go to another one, let's select QQQ by Invesco. Go back to M1 Finance and find a QQQ. We can see that QQQ tracks a modified market cap weighted index of 100 NASDAQ listed stocks. So QQQ is basically a large cap um, tech ETF that invests a lot of tech stocks such as Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Nvidia, all these huge tech companies comprise into QQQ. So if we go back to Seeking Alpha, type in QQQ, QQQ has an expense ratio grade of a B plus. The reason why it's a B plus is because it has a 0.20 expense ratio. As you can see from our last two ETFs, SHD had a 0.06 or 0.03, I believe, and VOO had another 0.03%. So it has an okay expense ratio grade of a B plus compared to other ETFs in the sector, 0.47%. That's good to see. 
If we look to, at our price return and taking into account the total return, we've seen the past year, QQQ is down 15% versus the SP500 is down 11%. In the past five years, it's actually outperformed the SP500 because tech stocks usually outperform in a bull market. In the past five years, the stock market has been in a bull market. So that's why it has actually outperformed the SP500. In the past 10 years, it has totally crushed performance, almost doubling the SP500 with almost 400% returns compared to the SP500 to 214%. So with that said, I can comfortably buy this ETF and um, sleep at night because all these companies are not going anywhere. You, you know, your Apples, your Microsofts, Amazons, Teslas, they're not going anywhere, even PepsiCo. And it has great returns that outperform the SP500 and it has a low expense ratio grade. So with that in mind, I'm gonna rank QQQ as S tier as one of the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. To go to another one, let's select DIA by doubt by spider so if we go back here and see dia where is dia so dia is the spider uh dow jones industrial average dia so dia tracked a price weighted index of 30 large cap us stocks selected by the editors of the wall street journal now dia is an index fund that tracks the um, dow jones industrial select sector some of its top holdings include United Health, Home Depot, Goldman Sachs, Microsoft, McDonald's, Visa. So DIA has you know 30 stocks that have a large cap value composition inside of it. If we go to Seeking Alpha and look at DIA, we can see that DIA has an expense ratio of an A plus grade with a super low expense ratio of 0.0%. I believe that might be wrong. It might be 0.03 or something like that. If we go to the momentum, we can see that in the total return, has actually outperformed the S&P 500 the past year of a negative 4% drop versus the S&P 500's negative 11%. In the past five years, it's actually kept up with the S&P 500, only trailing it by 6%, but we can see great returns of 60%. In the past 10 years, it has just barely underperformed the S&P 500 with 198% returns compared to the S&P 500's 214%. So DIA has excellent returns, a low expense ratio, and I can comfortably buy and unhold this ETF forever and sleep at night. So with that in mind, I'm going to put DIA as S tier as one of the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. If we go to another one, let's go to VTI by Vanguard. So if we go back to M1 Finance, find VTI. VTI is Vanguard's total stock market ETF. And it is basically tracks a cap weighted index that measures the investable U.S. equities market encompassing the entire market cap spectrum. So basically VTI invests in all these, uh, I believe it's like 3000 stocks. It, it invests in the large cap, the mid cap and the small cap stocks. As so many stocks, very diversified, invest in the total stock market of the US economy. Some of the top holdings inc include top dogs like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, etc. So if we go to Seeking Alpha, search VTI, we can see that the expense ratio for VTI is an A+, 0.03% expense ratio, super low expense ratio. If we look at the momentum, we can see that the total return is actually in track with the SP500, only down a 1% more in the past year. The past five years, it's actually just underperformed the SP500 with 60% returns, but we'd love to see some higher returns as you can see the chart is still going up. In the past 10 years, VTI has underperformed the SP500 just barely by a few percentage points, but it's keeping in track with SP500 because it has a lot of stock that mirror what the SP500 does. And so, with that in mind, it has low expense ratios. I can comfortably buy and hold VTI forever and sleep at night, and it has excellent returns. VTI is going to be in the S tier category for some of the best ATFs to buy and hold forever. Now, if I go to another one, let's go to SPY by Spider. If we go back to M1 Finance and find V or SPY, let's go back to SPY. So SPY is pretty much the same thing. It is a SP500 ETF. So it kind of tracks the SP500 as well, it's like VOO. So it is a ETF that tracks SP500, kind of the same holdings, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, etc. SPY, we go into Seeking Alpha. Again, this one a second, SPY. And if we look at the expense ratio, SPY has an expense ratio of uh, 0.09, which is an A. 
The reason why it's on an A plus is because there's a lot of other ETFs that do the exact same thing, which is track the SP 500. VOO has lower expense ratio, as well as IBV, which is another ETF. So that's why it gets an A. For its momentum, it pretty much is supposed to mirror the SP 500, which it does in the past year, in the past five years, and in the past 10 years. So SPY does mirror the SP 500. So can I comfortably buy and hold this ETF forever? Yes. Can I sleep at night? Yes. Does it have low expense ratios? Yes. And does it have a return that outperforms or keeps up with SP 500? Yes. So with that in mind, I'm going to actually put SPY as an A tier because there's an other, there's other ETFs that do the exact same thing as SPY with a lower expense ratio, such as VOO and even IVV. So that's the reason why I'm going to be ranking SPY as A tier. If we go to another ETF, let's go to ARK Innovation by Kathy Wood. And if we go to M1 Finance and find ARK, we can see that ARK is a actively managed fund that seeks long-term capital growth from companies globally involved with and or that benefit from disruptive innovation. So ARK is basically a super high tech growth ETF that's actively managed. So actively managed means that these um, fund managers buy and hold these stocks on a constant basis to try to outperform a specific index, that being the S&P 500. The top holdings in ARC include Tesla, Roku, Exact Sciences, Shopify, Teladoc, Zoom. All these high tech, high flank speculative stocks are in, are comprised inside of ARC Innovation. If we look up ARC Innovation, we could see that the expense ratio is a D is a really bad expense ratio grade of a 0.75% because if we look at why it's a really bad expense ratio, I've inputted a mutual fund calculator which shows the fees on the expense ratio. If we have an initial investment amount of $100 and invested $6,500 per year over a 40 year time horizon with a 10% average return, let's just say a 0.03% expense ratio, which is what VTI does and other ETFs as well. If we calculate it, we have an ending value of $3 million and a cost of fees of $26,000. But if we increase this expense ratio to 0.75 and calculated it, we would have a cost of fees of almost $600,000 and an ending value of just over $2.5 million. So we lose money over time with all these high fees. So high fees are not a good thing. Expense ratio for ARC is a D. If we look at the momentum, we could see that ARC Innovation total return is negative 45% in the past year versus S&P 500's 11%. The past five years, it has only a 4.82% return. And in the past 10 years, it has a 112% return compared to S&P 500's 214%. So we can see in the chart, it has dramatically outperformed the S&P 500. And at one point, it actually did outperform the S&P 500. With that in mind, it's super volatile, very speculative investment. Does it have low expense ratio? No. Does it have good returns to outperform SP 500 or keep up with it? Sort of. And can I comfortably buy and hold this ETF forever and sleep at night? Probably not. Yeah, I'm going to be ranking ARC as a D grade for our criteria on the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. If you look at another one, let's look at VYM by Vanguard. If we look at M1 Finance and find VYM, we can see the VYM is a high dividend yield ETF. So if the ETF is a high dividend yield index that selects high dividend paying companies, excluding REITs in a way by market cap. So VYM seeks to produce uh, ETF stocks that have high ETF um, dividend payments to investors. Some of the holdings include ExxonMobil, JP Morgan, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, all these great dividend paying companies inside of VYM. Go to VYM, it has a expense ratio of an A plus, 0.06% is excellent. And the momentum for the total return versus the SP 500 has outperformed in the past year due to you know high dividends and lower volatility. In the past five years, it has a 48% return compared to a 66% return of the SP 500. And in the past 10 years, it has just barely underperformed the S&P 500 with 160% return and versus the S&P 500's 214%. So with that in mind, low expense ratios, great returns that keep up with S&P 500, 
and I can comfortably buy and hold this ETF forever and sleep at night and get some high dividend pay payments. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and put VYM as S tier as some of the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. So go to VGT, which is a ETF by Vanguard. Scroll down to find VGT. It is an information technology ETF, which is basically, you know, only is a market cap weighted index of only information technology companies. So VGT is a super high tech ETF that invests in tech companies, such as Apple, Nvidia, Microsoft, Visa, AVGo, Cisco, Salesforce, all these ETF information technology stocks. If we go to VGT, we're going to see that VGT has a great expense ratio, 0.10%, which is an A. The reason why it's an A is because um, it has a you know low expense ratios. If we go to momentum. We can see that the total return that the first SP 500 is pretty much in track with it in the past year, negative 11 percent. The past five years, it has 131 percent return versus the SP 500 66 percent. That's because of you know high tech stocks normally outperform in a bull market, and we see that in the past five years. In the past 10 years, it's over double the SP 500, 477 percent return versus the SP 500 is 214 percent. It does it have low expense ratios? Yes. Does it have returns that outperform the SP 500 or keep up with it? Yes. And can I comfortably buy and hold this ETF forever and comfortably sleep at night? Yes. It has great stocks such as Apple, Microsoft, all these stocks. You know, it has I, I, so many stocks in it. I can comfortably buy and hold it forever. All these stocks are not going anywhere. So with that in mind, I'm going to put BGT as S tier some of the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. Let's go to another one. Let's go to SEHD by Charles Schwab. Now, SEHG is a growth ETF. If we go to M1 Finance, I find SEHG. SEHD is a growth ETF that tracks the Dow Jones U.S. large cap growth, um, the U.S. large cap growth Dow Jones sector, with uh, 750 stocks of the largest U.S. companies by market cap. It has some of the greatest stocks such as Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, Amazon, and many more. So it's a large cap growth ETF that seeks to outperform the SP 500. If we go to SEHG, we can see that it has a low expense ratio of an A plus grade, 0.04%, super low expense ratio. Its momentum in the past year is actually underperforming the SP 500, negative 16% returns versus the SP 500's 11% drawdown. The past five years though, it's outperformed the SP 500 with 83.81% returns versus SP 500 66.54%. Now in the past 10 years, it has also outperformed the SP 500 with 276% returns versus SP 500's 214%. So this ETF is great for high growth to outperform the market. Does it have low expense ratios? Yes. Does it have great returns? Yes. And can I comfortably buy and hold this ETF forever and sleep at night? Yes. So SCHD is going to go in the S tier category of some of the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. Let's go to another one. Let's go to VUG. Now I'm going to go pretty fast with VUG because it's pretty much the exact same thing as SCHG is another growth ETF that's selecting the large cap stocks, you know, similar holdings, um, similar performance. If you go to VUG, oh, no, VUG, VUG, the expense ratio is super low, A plus grade, 0.04. Momentum is pretty much in line with SEHG in the past five years has outperformed and the past 10 years has also outperformed the S&P 500 with super high performance, low expense ratios and comfortable comfortability. I'm going to put VUG top of the sector, S tier, some of the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. If we go to another one, let's go to uh, VXUS, which is a Vanguard ETF. Now VXUS, if we go to find it. VXUS is a total international stock ETF by Vanguard that tracks a market cap weighted index of global stocks covering 99% of the world's global market capitalization outside of the US. So VXUS pretty much tracks stocks that are not included in the US stock market. It has stocks that are, you know, outside of the US that have international exposure. So if you want international exposure, you can buy VXUS. It has, you know, top holdings such as ASML, Shell, APD etc. So if we go to VXUS, it has a low expense ratio of an A plus grade, 
0.07%, great expense ratio. If you go look at, at the momentum, the total per performance for the S versus the SP500, it's actually underperformed or no, outperformed the SP500 with negative 7%, decrease in the past year versus the SP500 is negative 11%. In the past five years though, it's actually underperformed the SP500 with negative with 11% returns versus the SP500 66% returns. And in the past 10 years, as underperformed the SP500 by quite a bit, as you know, U.S. stock equities have actually outperformed that's the, you know, international stocks. U.S. stock equities have been rocketing the past 10 years and in the past decade. So that's why VXUS hasn't seen great performance. So now, does VXUS have low expense ratios? Yes. Does it have returns that keep up with SP500? No. And can it comfortably buy and hold this ETF and sleep at night? Maybe. Because international stocks are you know, a little bit more riskier than U.S. stocks, in my opinion. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and put VXUS as a C tier ranking of, you know, some of the ETFs to buy and hold forever. It's going to get a C tier rank. So if you go to another one, let's go to VIG by Vanguard. VIG is a dividend appreciation ETF by Vanguard. So it, you know, invests in a market cap weighted index of U.S. companies that have increased their annual dividends for 10 or more consecutive years. This is more of a dividend growth ETF play to have some dividend payers that also have some good growth, but also some dividend payments as well. Some of the top holdings include United Health, Microsoft, Johnson Johnson, JP Morgan, all of, you know, some of the best stocks in the game right now. If we go to VIG, we could see that VIG has an expense ratio of 0.6% and an A plus expense grade. Great grade to have for VIG. And if you look at the price return versus the SP500, it's actually outperformed the SP500 in the past year of only negative 6% drawback versus the SP500 is negative 11%. And the past five years, it has pretty much kept track with SP500 with a 64% return. And the past 10 years has just barely underperformed the SP500 with 182% total, total return. So this ETF has low expense ratios, great returns, and comfortable comfortability to buy and hold forever and sleep at night. So with that in mind, I'm going to put VIG top of the ranking list, S tier, some of the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. Let's get into a controversial one. Let's get into Jeppy, which is a dividend paying ETF. Let's go to Jeppy. It's right here. So Jeppy is a JP Morgan premium income ETF, and it is a actively managed fund that invests in large cap US stocks and equity link notes. It seeks to provide similar returns as the SP500 index with lower volatility and monthly income. So what's cool about um, Jeppy, it has a high, high, a high dividend yield, 11.8%, which is super high. So you get all these monthly dividend payments and lower volatility versus, versus the SP500. Now it kind of derives its performance to options, but also invests in you know ETFs such as Hershey's, Coca-Cola, Microsoft, AbV, Progressive Corp, you know, some stocks that also holds to have that lower volatility. If we look at Jeppy, it has a expense ratio of a 0.35% and an expense grade of a B. So 0.35 is kind of high, but you're also compensated with high dividends of 11.8%. And I believe now it's over 12%. So it's great dividend payments for a low expense ratio. And the total return versus SP500 now this stock has only been inception for only in, you know since 2020, so I don't want to look at you know the overall performance of it. The past year though, it's been totally kicking butt, negative one percent um, drawdown versus the SP 500. It's negative 11, so it's outperformed the SP 500 and getting some great dividends of lower volatility in the past five years. You know it's missing this chunk of a couple years, but it's pretty much you know kept in line with the SP 500. You're not going to have outperformance because this is a dividend paying lower volatility ETF, but you know, it does provide 40% return, you know, including your dividends and it has a 66% return compared to that SP, SP 500. So with that in mind, can I buy and hold this ETF forever and sleep at night? Yes. Does it have great returns that outperform the SP 500 or keep in shock with it? Yes. You know, some great dividend payments and lower volatility and does it have a low expense ratio? I'm going to say yes. So for that, I'm going to be putting Jeppy as A tier because this is more of a, you know, a 
play when you're kind of in your retirement or you want to have some dividend income that you don't want to have outperform the SP 500. So I'm going to put JP as an A, but if we were talking about dividends, I'm going to be putting it as an S tier. That's now our criteria. So JP gets an A. We have six left. So let's go with Noble. And Noble is a dividend aristocrat ETF. So if I go to Noble, it's a pro share S&P 500 dividend aristocrat ETF. So basically, Noble tracks an, e an equally weighted index of S&P 500 constituents that have increased dividend payments annually for at least 25 years. So dividend aristocrats are, e are stocks that have increased their payments consecutively for at least 25 years. So these are huge dividend kings, great dividend ETF stocks. So it's some of the top holdings include Clorox, Abvi, Church and Dwight, PepsiCo, WST. So some great, you know, high dividend kings that have lower volatility. So if we go to Seeking Alpha and look at Noble, we see he has a low expense ratio of a 0.35% of a B. That's kind of high for the only low expense ratio scale, but that's okay. So if we go to the momentum of it, it has a total return that has outperformed the SP 500 with negative 5% drawback versus the SP 500's negative 11%. In the past five years, it has kept in line with the SP 500 with 60% returns versus the SP 500's 66%. In the past 10 years, it has a 165% total return versus the SP 500's 214%. So it has just barely underperformed the SP 500. Now, does it have a low expense ratio? Yes. Does it have great returns? Yes. And can it comfortably buy and hold this ETF forever and sleep at night? Yes. Dividend kings are not going anywhere. So I'm going to put Noble as S tier as one of the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. Let's go to another one. Let's go to VWO by M1 Finance. So let's go look at what it is. Now, VOO is an emerging markets ETF by Vanguard. So VO, VWO tracks a market cap weighted index of emerging market stocks, excluding South Korea. So VWO is an international stock ETF to provide some international stock exposure. So VWO has some top holdings such as Taiwan Semiconductor, APD, and CMLSQ. So VWO has a expense ratio that is a 0.08, super low expense ratio, A plus grade by Seeking Alpha. Look at the momentum of it. It has kept in track with the SB 500 in the past year, negative 11% drawback. In the past five years, it has very much underperformed the SB 500 with a negative 1% total return versus the SB 500's 66% total return. The SB 500 just totally outperforms it. And in the past 10 years, VW has not even kept in line with SB 500, 24.5% return, and the SB 500 has 214%. So, does it have a low expense ratio? Yes. Great returns? No. Can I comfortably buy and hold this ETF forever? Probably not. VWO is going to go in the D tier category, in my opinion. So, if we go to another one, let's go to VNQ by Vanguard. We're almost done with this video. Uh, VNQ is a real estate ETF. So, if you want to hold some real estate, you can invest in VNQ. So, VNQ, you know, uh, invests in an index of companies that have ownership real estate operations in the United States. So VNQ has, you know, some top stocks such as Progolis or Progolis, Prologus, American Tower, Crown Castle, um, Equinox, Pub Public Storage, Realty Income, Well Tower, you know, some of the best REITs um, on the planet pretty much. So if we go to Seeking Alpha, we can see VNQ has a expense ratio of an A, 0.12% expense ratio. So that's pretty good to have for a real estate ETF. And the momentum of it has underperformed the SP 500 quite a bit. The real estate sector has pretty much been hit super hard in the past year. So it has a negative 24% drawback. In the past five years, it has a 27.57% return versus the SP 500 has a 66% total return. In the past 10 years, the NQ has pretty much kept in line sort of with SP 500, 70% total return. SP 500 has over 200% gains. So, does it have low expense ratio? Yes. Does it have good returns? Pretty much average. And can it comfortably buy and hold its ETF forever? I would say yes, real estate's not going anywhere. So, in that in mind, I'm going to be putting VNQ as a B tier grade for some of the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. VNQ gets that B tier grade. 
we go to IWM, let's go to, let's move to iShares. So IWM is a ETF by iShares. Where is IWM? So VW of IWM is a iShares Russell 2000 ETF. So invests in some of the top, um, as a market cap weighted index of the US small cap stocks selected ranked from 1000 to 3000 by market capitalization. So it's quite a bit of stocks, a lot of small cap domestic stocks. Some such, you know, such as Crocs, Texas Roadhouse, Inspired Medical Systems, you know, all these smaller cap ETFs or stocks instead of, instead of the ETF. Go to IWM, we can see that it has an expense ratio of an A minus, low expense ratio, 0.19%. And the momentum of it has gone a lot more down than SP 500, negative 17% in the past year and in the past, oh, wrong one. So let's go to total return. So as a negative 15%, which is still lower than SP, which is still, you know, more than SP 500. So it's kind of drawn down a lot more. In the past five years, it has a return of 23.25% versus SP 500's 66%. And in the past 10 years, it has 112% total return versus SP 500's 214%. So it does have low expense ratio. IWN does good returns and can comfortably buy and hold this ETF forever. Yes, I would say that. Um, so I'm going to put IWM as an A tier for this buy and hold ETF forever category. IWM gets that A tier ranking. We have two left guys. Bear with me. Let's go to DGRO by iShares. And if we see DGRO is it is one of the most popular dividend ETFs. It's a dividend growth ETF by iShares, which tracks U.S. stocks that are selected by dividends, dividend growth, and payout ratio, then weighted by dividend dollars. So it has, you know, some great stocks inside of it, such as Microsoft, Apple, Johnson & Johnson, ExxonMobil, some great, e some great stocks inside of this ETF. If we go to IW or no, DGRO on Seeking Alpha, we can see that has an expense ratio of an 8 plus 0.08% expense ratio. Good to see. If we look at the momentum of it, it has outperformed the S&P 500 in the past year, negative 7% return versus the S&P 500. The past five years, it has pretty much kept in line with SP 500 with a 63.52% total return. And the past 10 years, it has 142% total return. Now we see a little bit missing right here. It has, you know, 2013, it doesn't, it was an inception, but I'm sure it's going to be keeping in line with SP 500. So with that in mind, I'm going to be putting DGRO as an S tier. The reason why, you know, low expense ratios, great returns. And can I comfortably buy and hold this ETF forever and sleep at night? Yes. Now, IVV is our last one, which is an iShares S&P 500 ETF. So IVV is a ETF that mimics the S&P 500. So it's an index fund essentially, you know, similar to um, uh, SPY, it's similar to VOO, same holdings, same goal. Um, if you go to IVV, let's see that our expense ratio was, you know, probably gonna be super low, 0.03%, A plus, the momentum's probably going to be in line with SP 500. We could see it does have that same mirror like performance. So IVV, low expense ratio, but great returns that keep in line with SP 500. And I can buy and hold this ETF forever. With that in mind, IVV is going to go in the S tier category as some of the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. Now, that was quite a bit of ETFs. We have 20 ETFs to rank. Um, from S, A, B, C, and D. Now, if your guys' ETFs weren't on this list, comment down below which one you guys would rank the ETF inside this list. I love you guys so much. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like this video, please leave a like because this cute puppy did. And if you guys want, you guys could comment if you guys agree with my tier list ranking of some of the best ETFs to buy and hold forever. Now, I want you guys to have a great rest of your day and continue to crush it in the stock market. Peace.